Hello, here is a small recording that forms a great foundational introduction to the Wildwood tradition. We will give you a bit of history, a bit of lore, a bit of mystery, that rhymes, that's cool, and a rundown on how we do things in our tradition, uh, which may or may not also be yours. Listen carefully, do so with an ear that there is much more than we can possibly put into the minutes we offer to you today. And thank you for being here. I invite you to notice that you are a living, breathing creature. And maybe you close your eyes for a moment. And in noticing our breath, in noticing our rhythm, I invite you to become aware of the country you're in, of the sacred land that you're in. Here in so-called Australia, there is an ancient custom of many forms. It is a custom of hospitality, of acknowledgement, of transition, of, of right relationship and respect. And also since invasion and settlement, it is an acknowledgement of that invasion and settlement and a deep, deep acknowledgement of the impacts of colonization and the strength and survival of First Nations communities, ways of being. I acknowledge that I am coming to you from the Gadigal and Bidjigal country and I acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging and I acknowledge the strength and survival of these cultures and communities, even in the face of systematic oppression, continued to this day. And I invite and ask that each of us listening and speaking acknowledge how all lands are wrapped up in this story of colonization and imperialism. And that Connecting with land is a central aspect of the craft, of witchcraft, and certainly of the wildwood tradition. So, the wildwood tradition is a form of ecstatic folkloric craft that in one form emerged in the mid-2000s. There were four people who felt fatefully called at a certain time, in a certain place, to travel to the slopes of a mountain in Yagara, Jagara and Turrbal country, which is colonially known as Brisbane. And on a certain night in a certain place, um, the coven of the Wildwood was founded. And certainly at the time, these founders of that coven were not uh, consciously deciding to or thinking of forming or articulating a tradition of witchcraft. However, that is what happened. Um, and so many of the people who helped to forge that going onwards might be called midwives, as the experience of a lot of us is that we were emotionally, personally, intimately beholding the reemergence of something quite timeless and ancient. And so there is an outer history of the tradition and an inner history of the tradition. So there's that which I can freely share with you now and that which is more mysterious, more personal, and I guess more oath-bound to those who are the body, who form the body of this particular initiatory tradition of witchcraft. So some of the roots and the rivers that hold and flow into this tradition um, include you know, the great revival of witchcraft in the so-called West, that is one of them. Um, the uh, presence and practice of folk magic within certain families, um, certain cultural influences around oracular uh, technique and possessory uh, protocol and experience, um, which actually differed from, I guess, the other forms of that aspecting assumption and invocation that some groups may have been practicing um, in the West. Another, another form or river or thread that was flowing in and helping to forge the tradition, of course, was active spirit work.
So one of the presumptions, I guess, or principles that we are situated within is that spirits have their own agency, just as we do as active or potential working spirits. And so with a big, big nod to them, the great ones and the mysteries that illuminate our craft. And as well as this, cross-pollination and partnership and intimacy between people within our tradition and people who may have been training in our tradition or dear friends of our tradition. And so this also forms an important root and origin of our craft. And so this is still the great warp and weft and braid of this tradition, a tradition that from the very beginning was founded by people of color as well as pale skinned people of European descent. Um, every single person who founded that coven was a queer person. And since that time, queer people have spilled into our, into our tradition. Um, we have constantly and always maintained that we are a tradition that is both steeped in law and history, as well as the intimacy and raw direct relating to the spirits. So these are some things that form our context continuously. Out of the emergence of the first coven of the Wildwood, um, I would say came the Guardians, and I'm sure many others would. <laughs> um, many of us refer to them as our first coven and company. And they often take the forms as this horned owl, as a cunning fox, um, as a king stag, tall and mighty, and as a mother bear. And at the center of all of that um, also comes a little cub. And I find with each of these miraculous guardian beasts, they each hold this distillation of a journey with them and a promise, whether that's the promise of going beyond time and space or the ability to shift and become cunning and know what it is to have the power and the art of wearing a mask, when to wear a mask and how to, and how to shift into these skins and out of them. <sighs> how to work with the dead and see with more than just our eyes and hear and perceive with more than just our ears and our own human flesh bodies. Um, the journeys of what it is to know yearning and desire and protectiveness and the wonder of all that could be, the promise of everything that tomorrow can hold amongst so much more. And in that, they're also tied very much so with the elements. We work strongly um, as a tradition in ecstatic land-based practices as well, working with the air, working with fire, earth and water, but more so than just them as a direction. It's knowing these elements as they embody us and we embody them as well. So yes, sometimes we might call to water in the West, but also we're very aware of our surroundings. And if there's a giant body of water, perhaps we're at an ocean or the beach. And if that's right behind us in the South, we might call from it in the South, we might work with that acknowledging that these elements in the raw state are sacred. <laughs> Including with that, there's many other spirits that we work with in the wildwood as well. I know that um, quite a great deal of uh, initiates and aspirants in the wildwood work with the four kin or the four families on a compass. Um, the red kin, the live kind of red-blooded animalistic ones, the white kin of the north, more seraphic, um, the grey, green, blue, fairied other kin from the west and our dead, so the black threads from the south. And also hold the mystery that sometimes these things mix and marry and merge and change for those in different hemispheres and in different lands. Sometimes these beasts and kins appear in different areas on a compass. Sometimes they look different. Maybe the cunning fox becomes a completely different alligator for particular people in particular lands. Ah, I think that there's an interesting relationship as much as these spirits have their own sovereignty and their own law and egregore around them. There's also an innate relationship with each wildwood witch as well that continues to form and grow. And in and amongst all of this as well, there's this mystery around the queerness from which the tradition was formed from. This 
ideology and exploration of what gender means for the witch, but also for the spirits themselves, whether that's more male body um, or female body, whether that's gender full, some mix of everything or genderless, kind of finding yourself in a nothingness um, or something else entirely all in between, completely outside the realms of gender. They form a bit of a dance and each one complements and pulls and pushes on an axis. And I find that for me within the wildwood, it's kind of dancing this wheel consistently and checking in with my relationships with myself as well as these spirits and spiraling in and out of these mysteries and constantly finding myself again in them, reforged through them. As they mark me and act as sponsors and guides um, throughout my journey through the wildwood, but also throughout my journey as a witch. The Wildwood tradition is a cultus of the sacred four, who are the four primordial gods of witchcraft that are particular uh, witch house is in covenant with. The first of the four is Grandmother Weaver, who is old fate, who can appear as the three fates, who is God, who is God herself, who moves everything that moves and everything moves. The grandmother weaves with time and with necessity and with endless desire. The grandmother weaves with the faded women, with the gentry, with the people of peace, with all of the dead, with our ancestors, uh, with the red blooded and with the seraphic, starry uh, and angelic spirits. The form and face of the weaver's web is the grandfather, who is everything that we can touch, who holds the serpents of the winds in his hand, who is great nature. And we pray that he turn his greenest face to us so that we can be filled with life. And his faces are many. Some are terrible, some stunningly beautiful. Our Lady is the crescent crowned goddess, the Rose Queen and the Raven Queen, who has many forms and names by which we know her. And we seek her bower and to learn her mysteries and to be blessed with love and with truth and with wisdom. And the fourth is the Prince of Paradise and the devil, the wolf cloaked horned God. And he is the master because he guides us all along the paths of our own mastery and challenges us uh, along those paths as well. He's a master shapeshifter. Uh, he is the being that uh, many witches encountered as the devil and teaches us sorcery. All four of these uh, we form complex and living relationships with. They are our teachers, they are our lovers, uh, they are our initiators. And uh, we each as Wildwood witches come into covenant with them and into a deep relationship being touched and transformed by them um, and uh, dancing with them, sometimes in their service, sometimes uh, working with them, collaborating with them. Uh, and those four are at the heart of our tradition. The sacred four, the witch-wreathed gods, 
wreathe and surround Ara, who is the first witch and the spirit of witchcraft itself, where the first witch is, all witches are, and where there is any witch, there too is Ara. Each of us within the Wildwood uh, is Ara herself, and our initiatory journey is walking in the footsteps of Ara. Ara is the lover of the devil and is in deep relationship uh, with each of the sacred four. And she's also a spirit that we can encounter flying into the wild wood, uh, learning from her, learning uh, to bless and to blast and coming uh, more deeply into the mysteries of the wildwood itself and the mysteries of our tradition. Wildwood is an initiatory mystery tradition, among other things. And the first thing that I feel is most important to say at the outset is that none of the initiatory cycles you can go through in the Wildwood hold any meaning that is in any way hierarchical or gives you better or bigger um, powers or access to anything. It's none of that. I emphasize this big time. So the first initiatory cycle you might enter into um, should you feel called to the Wildwood. So a small tangent here is the Wildwood does not advertise nor does it try to get any new members whatsoever. So it's kind of up to the person who feels at home or a tingle or a calling or something that is like, uh, like the scent arriving to you from afar and you sniff that scent and you're like, this is where I belong. Um, I would yeah, say this is, um, this is how most um, and many come to the Wildwood, um, especially those who stay. <laughs> Um, none of what I'm about to mention is to be taken lightly either. So each of our initiatory rites, they come with big challenges and big life changes. It's not an easy thing to go into, so that scent you smell uh, better truly make you feel like home or make you come alive inside or make you feel like you've found a part of yourself that you have lost once again. The first initiatory um, right you might ask for, because it's up to anyone to ask for, to seek out people, um, to build relationships based on trust before even beginning this journey into the Wildwood. Um, the first one is called uh, the Aspirant Blessing. And this basically means the first inhalation of the wild wood, which is why the scent metaphor kind of works here. Um, so it's a blessing uh, or a small ritual, you might also call it that, conducted by one or more uh, dedicants of the wild wood, um, by which all of the spirits of the wild wood are called to witness that uh, there is a new aspirant in the fold. Now, you, to even undergo that blessing, you would have to find someone in the Wildwood who is willing to teach you. And this happens by meeting someone in person, um, by asking for this. Sometimes one has to ask repeatedly. One might receive challenges. One might receive a no. Um, all this is possible um, before the aspirant blessing is even given. Once uh, you have received the aspirant blessing, and again, this doesn't mean you're extra special, it just means you've inhaled the wildwood for the first time, you will undergo a year 
or more of training with ideally more than one teacher. So sometimes it's just one teacher, um, but recently, especially recently, there's been more emphasis on aspirants having more than one teacher um, to not just have the input of one person, since the Wildwood has so many expressions as it has people within its forest woods. Um, in that year, you, uh, an aspirant, one, not you necessarily, but an aspirant will learn, most importantly, grounding and centering and aligning and staying sane and safe and um, wholesome with oneself. Uh, you will also learn ritual skills, uh, bits and pieces of mystery, uh, some of the things in more detail that have already been mentioned in this, um, in this recording. Um, and after, yeah, at least a year, one can ask to be dedicated into the Wildwood, which is basically a further unraveling and unfolding of the Wildwood mystery along with the revealing of certain lore and names, as is tradition in mystery traditions. Um, I shall say no more to that. And finally, uh, there is one more initiatory rite one can ask for, and that is the firebrand initiation. Now, this is, again, not something to be taken lightly. It's also not something that makes you more special. It's um, something you can first ideally do after dedication has settled in for a year or more since big changes often happen. And during the firebrand initiation, so first uh, the dedicant would ask for this and find ideally again more than one mentor um, or a mentor and some helpers along with that mentor. Um, and the firebrand initiation is basically uh, greater marriage to the tradition, a stepping into being in service of the tradition and of others. So a stepping into service and um, the greatest challenge of that initiation are given by yourself to yourself and the mentors hold the container thereof. The rest is mystery. From a perspective of the red threaded human community, um, as this tradition grew and spread, um, so did our uh, forms, our structures and our systems. Um, and some of these uh, grew naturally um, and they were emerging from the beginning of the tradition, some formed by need. Um, one of those uh, one of those practices is um, the tradition wide council that happens um, every uh, two years where wildwood witches um, aspirants and initiates are welcome to gather together and uh, speak about salient points or um, things that are emerging from the tradition um, or uh, topics of interest to discuss um, a space for wildwood witches to gather and speak about uh, pieces that are important and emerging in at that time. Um, some of those things that have emerged from the council um, are the manifesto, uh, which uh, came about um, by the work and service of a handful of wildwood witches um, about five years ago. Um, and this is um, available to read on the website. Um, but it is considered a living document. Um, and I'm sure uh, different wildwood witches would um, describe this differently, but um, it might be considered a statement of purpose or a touchstone or a set of principles. Um, but I might just read from the first paragraph of that manifesto. The wildwood tradition of witchcraft is an ecstatic, sorcerous and mystical path through the heartland of witches the spirit landscape of primeval forest. Within this forest are standing stones, labyrinths, gods and old ones. 
Within this forest, there is mystery. This landscape is the covenant that binds us together. Another system that has emerged from um, these uh, wildwood gatherings is the idea of a council, um, a council of keepers. And um, this emerged from need um, and uh, really acknowledges that um, there are certain roles within the tradition um, that uh, that we seek to to hold, uh, I guess, not necessarily to um, to store the power, to hold the power, but more to host these roles that exist and these uh, roles of, of service and labor. Um, it's not a centralized power. Um, I would consider it more as a resource hub for this wider network um, of witches that span across many um, time zones and uh, many different landscapes. Um, and each keeper acts as a host of the role for about three years before cycling off for someone else to cycle on. Um, and this is really a spell of service for the community. And it, it acknowledges that there is community and where there is community, there is, um, there is work and um, beauty. The wildwood itself calls to her witches because they are a great spirit creature themselves. So the wildwood is a tradition full of law and ways, and it is fed by each and every witch in relationship with the woods and its mysteries. And because of this, we say the wildwood belongs to all witches, but some witches belong to the wildwood. As a priestess of Bridget, it would be remiss of me not to mention that she pops up in the mythos a lot, which is delightful. In common with other initiatory traditions, we do not charge for training or initiation. And because of this, you, the aspirant does need a deep relationship with their initiator. You're not gonna find a PayPal button on our website. <laughs> May the wild woods flourish.